Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the editor in chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with Keith Best of Onto Innovation. We're going to talk today about total overlay involving multiple RDL layers. Keith, we're getting more and more RDL layers. What's the big problem with that? That's a great question, Ed. So we're talking about the advanced IC substrates here, which are on copper cloud laminate. And in this particular application, there are many layers on both sides of the uh, copper cloud laminate connected by a plating through hole. And the issue is that uh, the overlay is fairly loose between one layer and another, but when you summation of all these uh, layers from the very last layer on the top side to the very last layer on the bottom side, the total length of this RDL trace between the two sides is actually quite long. And the worse the overlay is over time, the bigger the error, and of course the more resistance you'll get in your RDL connection, which is a problem for the final device manufacturing. Let's take a closer look. Sure. Keith, what are we looking at? Okay, so in this image on the left-hand side here, we show good overlay in the stack. Basically, we have a, a kind of um, copper cloud laminate uh, center here, plated through hole, shows a PTH, and this is showing both uh, side one and side two, layer one, layer two, layer three, connecting RDL structures through via holes plated with copper right through the substrate to the other side of the actual substrate. And this represents the minimum uh, resistance between the RDL structures from the top to the bottom of the substrate. You're getting a lot more things going into RDL than they did in the past. I mean, we've run out of space on the, the chip itself, so now we have to move into the RDL and we're doing more and more layers. What happens when these things start to shift a little bit? Okay, good question. So if I move to the next image, you can see a representation of this. And of course, now we see uh, overlay moving between the layers such that now the total length of the RDL is, is longer. And in fact, the typical overlay it's quite large. It's built into the actual structures to accommodate uh, various uh, errors during the different layers. But relative overlay is okay. But the real thing is total overlay because you want a summation of the whole stack because that's what impacts the actual uh, resistance. So, of course, if you have one layer that's off and the next layer is back the other way, then that's not so bad because you can accommodate this through the whole stack. But if you keep going in the same direction like it shows here, then, of course, it gets longer and longer and longer. Are you inspecting this at every single level that you added a new layer here? Yes, in fact, what you can do if you have a database, you can have a, a barcode or a, a reference to the panel, so you can record the panel as it goes through every single process step. As it gets to the next step, you can actually summation of all the different overlays. So let's say layer one, you have an overlay of five microns error, the next one's another five, 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 and eventually with 24 layers, <laughs> 12 layers each side, you could end up with 115 uh, microns of error, which is really significant over this distance. Is this pretty much only at the most advanced nodes that you're starting to see this? Um, well, good question, because uh, the advanced nodes has now kind of moved. This was advanced <laughs> node a little while ago. As you can imagine, this uh, space changes very rapidly. And now you've probably heard the uh, release of um, information from Intel. It talks about the glass core. That's really the next generation. That's a little bit different because that application has much more stable substrates. We're talking about glass, which doesn't move around as much as copper cloud laminate. Copper cloud laminate is, is a woven sheet of fiberglass with resin, and this uh, weave is very orthogonal. So any uh, heat cycles for the ABF cycling will actually distort the substrate. So this distortion in the substrate will actually cause you to have more challenging overlay. Glass, of course, is much more stable. One of the other big problems that you're starting to deal with here is that you're getting warpage on some of these things because the dyes are getting thinner, right? That's right. In fact, uh, not only the dye getting thinner, but also the fact that the, uh, the warpage that we just talked about um, caused from thermal cycling gets worse as well. But in this case, uh, they try to minimize that effect by having the, the layers balanced. So in fact, when you go through uh, the process, you'll end up with layer one on side A and layer one on side B happening uh, at the same time. So they balance out the stresses. The glass, of course, will have a more challenging problem because most of the critical layers are on one side. And so you maybe have 10 layers that are critical, then a few layers that are non-critical to connect to the board through the balls. But of course, having more things on one side gives you more stress and more warpage. What happens when you get to something like backside power delivery, which is coming right through all this RDL as well? Well, yes, that's another whole discussion. In fact, even beyond that, you're talking about power delivery, then including um, embedded dye to actually facilitate that. Some of the resistors and, and passes are going to be in the core area here. That makes things even more complicated because now you have to have overlay connecting to these as well, and they're moving around as well. It's, 
it's it's one of those kind of moving target conversations where if you can't adapt to that uh, by using your lithography tools or being able to track it through some sort of database, you're going to be in trouble having lower yield and, and higher resistance, which is a problem for the final device. As you add more RDL layers, do the thermal problems increase? Uh, yes. In fact, what you find is that when you get to it's like layer 20, <laughs> that the uh, the rectangle panel, which was 510 by 515, is now some sort of trapezoid shape. So it's, uh, it's completely different. And of course, uh, it's very important to be able to predict uh, what's going to happen so you can accommodate that uh, dimensional change. How does all this impact what you're trying to achieve in the chip? Okay, so if you look to the right over here, I show a simple equation here, this is very familiar to most people. Resistance is equal to rho L over A. Basically, the A is the area of the uh, RDL structure, L is the length. And of course, uh, this is a resistivity uh, function or coefficient, but this length function is what we're talking about here. As this increases, your resistance increases. So as a result of all of these layers of RDL and drift, there's a potential that you can actually get out of spec for your resistance from your RDL structures, and that's a big problem. So a number of the uh, advanced substrates and manufacturers set a specification, what they call front-to-back overlay. It is basically the overlay between the very last layer on the top side and the very last layer on the bottom side. And that's a real critical feature. So tracking it through the process, being able to figure out where things are, is going to be really important. We used to think about RDL as just this goop that went in there and nobody really thought about it very much. It's now become a critical part of what you're doing in this chip, right? Well, it's the package, actually. Um, but in fact, you're absolutely right. Uh, it's become critical, especially as you move to uh, sub-2 micron resolution for the RDL. The smoothness of the RDL is going to be really important for signal transfer, low noise, and also the... The planarization between the layers of RDL is also very important because you'll see changing capacitance effects. So everything gets smaller, everything gets more precise, so all of a sudden the things that were easy in the past uh, become much more difficult. Are the RDL materials changing as well? Uh, well, in essence, mostly the same, but some of the way they're, way they're uh, created and uh, employed will be different. So for instance, you see electroless copper being used for the CCL. You move into glass, you'll be doing electroplating copper. And also the C material, you know, that will be slightly different. So it's just adapting to the resolution uh, and the node. I mean, this came from PCB back in the old days, 50 microns and above. We, take, we took PCB knowledge and materials and tried to push them into this uh, space. And of course, they're running out of steam. And there's a tipping point. And I think two microns especially, that's where it's going to have to happen. What's the impact as we start getting into custom designs and, and heterogeneous integration here? Okay, that's, that's not a good question. So this is a really uh, broad topic because there are so many different types of designs. This basic structure I'm showing here just connects the, uh, the chips to the PCB. But within this, now people are talking, like I said earlier, about embedding chips, embedding passives, and actually trying to make the whole package smaller. Because as you know, these packages now are hitting 120 millimeters on the side. That is enormous for a package. The more you can squeeze those periphery electronics inside the package, the better. And you see a number of customers trying to do that within this structure. What have you actually seen going wrong out in the real world? Okay, a couple of things. First of all, there's the uh, defectivity. As these features get smaller and smaller, uh, we see more and more uh, metal line bridging, as well as metal shorts, which is causing a yield loss. Uh, but beyond that, the overlay challenges. Because I mentioned before here that the, uh, the fact that the subjects are changing, uh, they're distorting over time. Uh, and as a result, you have a challenge to get good overlay. Now, production overlay in this sort of space right now is probably around about 10, 12 microns. But as, a, as the overlay, as the uh, resolution gets smaller and smaller, that's going to get tighter and tighter. And as, as a result, you have to have some better metrology and ability to correct your lithography tool to make sure you can get the good overlay for these new uh, resolution and overlay tolerances. You're really into a mechanical engineering world in addition to the electrical, right? That's interesting too. So. In the past, the PCB guys were drilling things with mechanical drills. Uh, they did move forward from drills to laser drilling, which is actually another conversation that's quite interesting. And that actually is an area there we, we might see some challenges if we go below 10 micron vias. So typically, uh, laser drilling in ABF is typically at uh, 30 microns and above. As you can imagine, drilling holes that are small is going to be a problem. But you need smaller vea holes to bring the smaller RDL to life. If you have a massive vea hole, then your small RDL is useless because you can't design all the, all the information into that one layer. The key here is to try and reduce the number of layers. I've got 24 layers here. If you can go with glass, smaller geometries, smaller designs, you can cut this in half or beyond that. 
but you need to make, make sure everything that comes with you to make be successful. As you add more layers, does it also put stress on the layers below and potentially uh, cave them in or, or warp them or yeah, deform there's, them? Yeah, there's a number of issues there, but most of the time people design this such that the non-critical layers are near the core. So the first layers are quite big. But as you get closer to the surface, they get smaller and smaller. And in fact, there's some papers from uh, Unimicron that talk about a hybrid scenario where they do the easy stuff with a uh, copper cloud laminate, then they get a glass panel, which they've defined uh, some RDL on, which are two micron, then they connect it to the stack using balls, so they get the best of both worlds. Kind of cool. Keith Best, thanks for a really interesting conversation. Right. Thank you, Ed. Appreciate it.